First up is public comment. This is comment on anything that's not on the agenda. Hi, Trini. It's Robin Goodall on behalf of the library board, just giving to give the weekly update, the monthly update, I guess. Um, okay. We wanted to, we wanted the board to be aware that the library has closed for. I mean, I, I suspect you all know this, but we have closed for um, in person, most in person all electronic actions. I say, um, business is still happening. Um, we are meeting as a board of trustees weekly with Amy to read. Make sure that we are keeping people safe, um, both the employees and the public. And we have two employees that are comfortable being in the library, Amy being one of them. And so um, they're able to request materials and pick them up with um, outside pickup. Great. So, and, and there are lots of resources. The newsletter is sending out lots of resources, and the Facebook page has lots of resources for community members that are at home, especially so that, that are also doing home. Thing. And Amy, if I missed anything, you can feel free to chime in there. Um, thanks, Robin. OK. Does the board have any questions about the, the way the library is proceeding through this very strange time. Sounds good. Thank you. Take care, everybody. You too. Thank you. Thanks, Robin. We had You're somebody else join. Oops. We had somebody else join the call. I'm here, Larry. Okay. Oh, Got that, right. Shannon? <laughs> Just helping Shannon yes, keep her notes straight. <laughs> Okay, you're moving on to approval of the agenda. Oh, I'm um, um, sorry Trini, to interrupt. This is, it's, did have a question. Okay. Uh, I wanted to get an update on the status of the climate solutions resolution letter that the select board is supposed to be sending to our state representatives. Uh, Trini, I, I could answer that. This is uh, okay. Adolfo John. Uh, the select board discussed the, um, the, the the crafting of the letter two meetings ago. Uh, unfortunately, with everything that's happened since then, uh, I have not had a chance to draft it with just issues coming up. Uh, but the board has given me direction on what to include in the letter to then bring to the board for their approval before sending to our legislators. Does the select board want any assistance in drafting that letter? Uh, and if I, if I need any, I'll certainly ask. I think uh, too many cooks in the kitchen would delay the process. It's already been delayed for a while, so. Uh, yeah, but we, we're also dealing with a global pandemic. And I don't mean to be rude, but th there are other issues at hand. Oh, I understand. Hence my offer for providing assistance, understanding that you are busy with other <clears> issues. <throat> Okay. Do we have any other um, out there for public comment? Yeah, so this is Amy, and I'm here as a representative for the Randolph Area Mutual Aid Network. <laughs> I just want to give a quick briefing about the purpose and yeah, no. goals of ROMEN. Um, this is a community-wide um, network, I guess we could call it, um, that is working to maximize um, the services that each organization can offer to support people during the COVID outbreak, um, also to keep one another informed and to leverage the resources that we share um, to help support our communities. Uh, we serve Randolph, Braintree, Brookfield, and East Granville residents. There are three teams at this point that are active. There's a communications team, a fundraising team, and a volunteer team. The communications team right now is working on um, saturating as much as we can the communities with 
opportunities to know what services are available to them. And one of the activities that we're working on right now is to put together an every door direct mailing. Um, a lot of ramen activities right now are conducted the robust web page, which I hope you have had a chance to look at, um, also postings on Front Porch Forum and so on, but that does no good for folks who don't live in the digital world. So we're working to get uh, literature into the hands of every resident um, so that they know that there are resources available to them if they have a need um, that needs um, and they need support. So uh, the fundraising committee, um, I think that one is pretty self-explanatory. People will be making contributions to support their community members, and they're working on a mechanism to make sure that um, folks are getting the help they need. And the volunteer committee, which is working to take in information from folks who have needs, everything from needing um, deliveries of groceries to help moving to with the organizations and volunteers who have the capacity to help. So uh, that's what we're working on right now. Do you all have any questions? Sounds like a lot of coordination and collaboration. It is, and Linda Anderson with Capstone Community Action has been amazing with um, keeping us on track and bringing together um, the organizations and agencies that can really support the community at this point. So hats off to her. Great. Absolutely. Yep. And Amy, this is, um, and everyone, this is Tom Ayers. Um, I've been participating in the weekly uh, Zoom meetings of the Ramen Group and uh, can only um, second part of Amy has said they've been doing some great work. Um, it's perhaps best for me to bring this up during the other business portion of the meeting, but um, the, the Ramen Group has asked for the the towns of Brookfield, Randolph, and Brain part uh, or founding members of this network, and uh, I would recommend that for a consideration. All that would mean right now is that we would have a, a official representative, if you will, at the table uh, when we meet each week uh, to represent the towns, um, uh, the three towns. So um, just put that out there for everyone's consideration. Also, and, and Josh have also been participating in the meetings as, as uh, their time allows. So. Seems like the town kind of was a founding member, just wasn't official. At least the town. Yeah, uh, w we had a discussion uh, among the founding members, especially the people on the communications team, which includes Amy and myself, um, over the course of the last day or two, as to whether we should officially ask the town through their select board uh, to be sort of sponsoring members of the group. Uh, we didn't want to be so presumptuous as to say, I, 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 in my capacity as the president-elect of the Randolph Rotary Club, which is one of the uh, participating entities in this process. Um, but the, the, the participation by uh, Josh and Adolfo and myself was never really formally in an official town capacity, as I understand it. Would we deal with that under new business? We would. Um, we'll just need to understand what founding member means. Like, what is it? Are you looking for the town to be at the table to help with coordination efforts and whatnot? Or is there, what's the ask of the town? I think that would be part of the expectation. Right now, all of the participating organizations, um, and I can I can list those later in the meeting if we if you want, or I can list them now. There are 16 participating organizations 
mostly made up of area churches, social, um, the Kimball Library, the two Rotary Clubs, uh, and the uh, Orange County Sheriff's Office, a whole handful of groups. Um, uh, and really, they're all just participating in the discussion to coordinate different activities. Um, uh, at some point further down the line, uh, there may be uh, a modest financial ask or contribution of some of these organizations, but that's um, that's something that could come further down the line, and it's not an expectation of participation. Okay. All right. Do we have anything else under public comment? Hi, Trini. This is Heidi. I'd like to give a brief report on our parks. Um, okay. As you know, we closed down our park area, so the tennis courts remain to be closed. Um, we have had a lot of high traffic activity as well in the park and the playground, as well as in the courts, basketball courts. Mm -hmm. um, so I have put multiple signs up, closed um, as well as the playground. And that goes along with all the parks and playgrounds across Vermont. Um, and uh, Monday, Sunday night, we had, or during the afternoon, uh, a couple of kids broke into a shack behind the skate park. And that skate park, I mean, ice rink. Um, they pulled out um, a few old ramps that were there. Um, I found them Monday, and I had them removed. Afternoon, uh, the police have been notified, and we talked to several of the kids, and uh, we are trying to educate them. Like we get that you're bored, and there's not much to do, but you know, breaking into a shack is not one of the things to do. Um, so I'm for this group of bikers and kids in the park because it's getting bigger. Um, but everything else is cleaned up on the ice rink. Um, and uh, all, all the programs have been suspended. Um, baseball right now is the only one that we have, and that is not. Uh, we're waiting for guidance from the leagues and the governor, and hopefully we'll have an answer by next week if the baseball season will take off or be canceled officially. So that's all from, oh, and then I, we are still hoping for summer camp. So that's what we've been working on summer um, and getting that staffing kind of ready, but that's also all pending and hopefully we'll have better clear guidance within the next couple of weeks. So that's all from so, the rec department. I would tell you uh, wherever you are tomorrow at 11 o'clock to tune in to the governor's press conference we'll do yeah it'll be live on tv and it'll also be on facebook on his thing usually uh and cax lots of times live streams it on their website yes and we've been i've been meeting with um via zoom uh with all the vermont um parks and rec directors and we're trying to stay all on the same page and so it's been really great about summer and the pool. Mm -hmm. Good. Great. Any questions for Heidi? Great. Thank you. <clears throat> Any other public comment? Hearing none, approval of the agenda. Tom, I move, I move, approve, approve the agenda. agenda. I was going to ask if we could add uh, under other business the Raman question whether the town would be an official founding member. We already added that under new business. We did. Okay. Yep. I'll second, second. Okay. the approval of the agenda. Okay. All those in favor? 
Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Consent calendar. This is meeting minutes and warrants. In your packets, you should have the meeting minutes for both the 12th and the emergency meeting on the 24th. Larry moves that we approve the consent. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carrie, new business, the VTrans mileage certificate. This is a an annual process with trans. They ask us to um, certify our highway mileage. Uh, there is in your packets a uh, document uh, that uh, uh, included a background material to confirm that we have the necessary items that uh, show that we are up to date with our highway network inventory. So if the board were to um, uh, approve this, it would just, I would just need a motion and we could use our minutes and one signature as uh, proof that the board confirmed as opposed to all five signatures. Okay, any questions? Motion? Uh, I move to certify the uh, town and bridge, uh, the uh, roads, I guess it's roads, this is the roads, right? Yeah, it is the roads. Highway yeah. mileage. Town roads and bridge standards. Is that part of it? Uh, um, it would just be the uh, highway certificate um, um, <coughs> title of document. Uh, yes, the certificate of compliance for town roads and bridge standards. Okay, I move to do that. Second. Those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Do we have one opposing? No, no, it was a oh, late okay. aye. <laughs> <laughs> Just helping <laughs> Shannon. <laughs> Next up is the water wastewater payment process. Uh, the Water Wastewater Committee met recently to discuss what options uh, they have available to them to to, to uh, ratepayers in the Water District and the Sewer District. Uh, concluding that meeting, our Finance Director uh, reviewed some of the material uh, that the committee discussed and uh, pulled together an action item sheet for the Board to consider uh, and the recommended motion is included. To add more information, this would essentially mimic what the board had previously done with tax payments. Instead of it being a three month uh, delay on tax liens or delinquent water and sewer bill um, penalties, it would only do it for 90 days because 90 days more closely resembles um, when bills are mailed, uh, mailed out for water and sewer payments. Any questions on this? Have we got any feedback that this will be a problem? Or I'm curious why the committee was discussing that. The there may be a requirement for to place a ballot um, or an article on the ballot that asks uh, ratepayers for permission to retroactively approve this. Um, that, that that is that is a holdback. The challenge there is that the ratepayers can say no and. Here it would be roughly between three and five thousand dollars, where uh, the ratepayers would have to then reimburse the town as a whole if uh, the town voters were to decline this. This doesn't have anything to do with the town wide, right? This is just the water district. Right, it would just be the water district, and uh, for for delaying of the penalties and the interest, right? So we may still have to go to 
You're right, Trina. Yeah, we would have to ask. We just the, have to go to the water district now. Water district. That's right. Uh, Larry, when this was being discussed in committee, did they see any problem with that passing by the voters? Um, I mean, no. I mean, the, the sense of the committee is that it, that it was a good idea. Um, the, we didn't have the authority, you know, as a as, as a committee to uh, to make this decision, but we did talk about it and think, that, you know, it that it would be pretty nice for at least a small group of people and thought it was worth doing. Okay. Um, and I think, as as Adolfo points out, the, the amount of money involved is is not um, not so large that we really thought it, you know, that that no matter which way it would go, whether the the, the district, you know, ultimately approves it or or doesn't, that um, it didn't it didn't seem to be a significant factor. So when we do our billing. For water and wastewater, are we going to be able to, if somebody's delinquent multiple quarters, will we be able to break out that this one quarter doesn't incur the additional fees, or are we waiving it for their entire bill? That's one of the things we ran into with the property taxes. Yeah, I, I'd have to reconfirm with Cliff. My understanding was that it would be able it would be easy enough for us to break out this 90 day period for fees and interests um but i would have to double check with with cliff okay Adolfo, any other questions that was my impression system yeah if i remember correctly when we were looking at some of the uh, issues with folks that hadn't paid it was broken down by line item according to when the billings were made. Adolfo and Trini, this is Cliff. Mm -hmm. Hey, Cliff. Um, so on the billing system, Trini, can you repeat your question again? When we were, when we were looking at the at waiving the penalty uh, for property taxes, it was going to be real challenging to break out for those that had delinquent taxes prior to the period we were looking at. So my concern was that we didn't back you into a scenario where these people, somebody hadn't paid their prior invoice and you had to try to decide how to break out the interest or penalties on just this, this span of time. So I, I, I think we can do it um, because of the way the billing system works, impose interest balances from a certain date back, and and I believe the motion is written so that the um, the board would be putting a similar 90-day moratorium on those bills so that it would be essentially one billing cycle. Mm -hmm. So if it's um, the cycle, just so we're clear when we about given some of the questions we we're into with the property tax piece, if I didn't pay my last bill and I'm already collecting fees and penalties, is that amount that I owed before this billing cycle going to collect tax and fees during this period, or does it does the motion need to be done so that there's no tax and no interest and penalties accrued during this 90-day period? On, no matter what the... No, we, we can we can continue to accrue interest on the old balances. Okay. That's what we did with taxes, right? That that is correct, Larry. Pat. Sorry, Pat. Pat. Okay. That's what I meant to say. <laughs> <laughs> Just want to make sure we give you the motion so that you can implement it easy. Yep. Yeah. In all your Appreciate spare that. time right now, out doing your photography this morning. <laughs> <laughs> that was done last night. That was not done this morning. <laughs> well, I can tell you the load of stuff went north today. So A&R was on site and shut them down. Uh, that's what I heard. So. Well, there was a lot of emails going around this morning, too. So, 
<laughs> well, by the time it got to me, we already had A&R on site, so. Multiple paths. <laughs> anyway, different issue. Um, <laughs> I need just a few more. Okay, so uh, any other questions on this? If not, we'll entertain a motion. I move that we uh, use the suggested motion that the DOFL has in our paperwork. I'll second that. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thanks, everyone. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have the proposal for swimming pool sanding and painting. Uh, yeah, a draft RFP that um, uh, Heidi and I have reviewed and pulled together. Uh, it has a lot of detail in here that's provided by Heidi on what is still uh, needed at the swimming pool. Uh, and much of that has been discussed by the board in the past, and it's mostly just the, the sanding, taking away of the old paint and resurfacing and applying new waterproof paint. And this is just approval to send the RFP out? Approval to, to send out the RFP, and then also um, we would need a motion to allow us to essentially use the $40,000 in the Recreation Equipment Reserve Fund. Would this come back to the board, Adolfo? Uh, the, the, uh, the bids would come back to the board if we have multiple bids. The challenge is, and Heidi's much more familiar with this because she's been dealing with the issue more, more directly, but the challenge is that there are very few uh, people in our general area that could perform this work. Uh, so we may have to do a single source uh, option at that point. The, the board wouldn't have to review the bid again, but we can bring it back, absolutely. I'm I'm here. Sorry, um, if you have any questions on it. Well, I think even if you only have one bidder, it needs to come back to the board for approval. Just yeah. given the refresher course I've recently taken on our procurement policy. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. So, I mean, what you're asking for right now is permission to send the RFP out. Or RFPs should go out with language in it that allows us to not accept any of them, so I don't see any harm in sending the RFP out. Okay. Anybody have any questions on that or other thoughts? Well, I'd make a move to uh, send out the RFP within the budgeted amount. I'll second that. I'll second a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, the culvert on the Beanville Road. Uh, this is a project that's been ongoing for a number of years. We finally have sufficient funds to complete the project. Um, we are still working, or I'm still working with Two Rivers and VTran to craft more appropriate um, and we're also we're, we're also hoping that the town won't have to pay for this project if if funds are made available for infrastructure repair through federal th federal bills. But for now, uh, I would like to ask the board for permission to once this proposal is um, complete and has two rivers and V trans at its uh, at, uh, I'd be allowed to, to send it out. It's very some responses, or I could also delay sending it out and wait to see what federal legislation uh, does. Um, and I, the reason I, I say the last part, the latter, is because I learned today from VTrans, our, our, our representative, Chris Bump, 
that they would be more than willing to extend our existing grant for expire in 2021, which gives us a whole other year to work with. Yeah, I think um, the only concern I have with sending this out now, the way it's drafted, is it has none of the pieces in it that will be required for a federal grant. Yeah. Um, and there are coming. This is a prime project for us to get 100% funding on. Um it's awesome that we're poised and ready because a lot of towns aren't in that boat, which is going to make us a lot, a lot better positioned to compete for these funds. Um, but I, I think we need to take this bid document and um, my recommendation would be to hang on to it for a little bit. Um, and by next month, know whether we're going to be able to go for federal funding for this or not. I like the idea of it being able to be paid for by 100% federal funding yeah. so there's no cost to the town. Um, and I also like the idea of maybe potentially being able to package it with some other projects at the same time, whether it's Maple Street or or some of that, if we can get all of them funded. But that would be my. I, I I agree, Trini. Yeah, if if it's okay with with you and the board, I'd like to just ask the board to to skip this for now. I'm agreeable with that. I am as well. Sounds good. Do we need a motion to table or just? No, we just skip over it. Okay. We'll see it again on another agenda. It might have a little fancier name on it, though. <laughs> um, question on possible funding. Do we have any idea when applications would be due on? No, they can't even agree on how to put the bill together in Washington. So there's no, you know, the guidance isn't out to the town level yet, um, but the conversations are taking place, some of the what their intent is. We, I've been in on conversations of that. Um, and where, you know, what types of projects they're looking at. Um, we've got some projects in Randolph that we would like to do that are, you know, like expanding water and sewer down the Beanville Road that don't really bring in a lot of long-term jobs but our, will allow us to be poised to bring in uh, additional businesses or to connect some of the folks up on Route 12. Um, we wouldn't compete well in the normal funding because of they're usually looking for sustainable jobs. Some of this money is going to be looking at jobs that you can get people into right now right. to do. So it's they're looking at how many people are going to be employed while that job is taking place versus what the end benefit of jobs is. This, the Beanville Road culvert, Maple Street, redoing Maple Street, um, the water wastewater, connecting the town reservoir, those projects all will compete very well for that type of funding. And they may have already been packaged up and put a bow on um, and put some big numbers on to try and just give some examples of types of community projects that would benefit from this type of stimulus money that don't compete in normal funding pots. So we'll you see what happens. You also have a list of what you're thinking so that the rest of us could be looking at that too. Well, those are the uh, projects that we have going on anyway. Mm -hmm. So it's connecting the wells, um, the new wells to the water system, um, which is a project that's out there that we've been hammering on, on looking for funding to deal with the manganese issue. Um, so that's one of the projects that we have. 
uh, Maple Street and our challenges there. Uh, you know, while we're we're looking at Maple Street and the, ch you know, you've got the issue of power poles and nobody wants them on their side of the street. So we might as well just increase the size of the project and bury all the power lines while we're at it, right? So that takes away that problem and we may have gained what we need to put the sidewalks down through there without having to make it go to a one-way street because the funding limits aren't, aren't really on us as much there. Uh, this culvert has been a historic project that's haunted us to, to get all the funding for. Um, that's on there. We have the water and sewer lines uh, to connect down through to Central Supplies and down the Beanville Road to um, all the way to the Vermont Castings Building. So th these are all basically legacy projects that we have out there um, that we're, the opportunity is there and you're looking for a place to dump some money, we have a place we can give it a home. Uh, you know, earlier this week, I would, Adolfo and I participated in the East Valley group uh, meeting and throughout the, the idea of rather than go for smaller grants and have to do, put a lot of energy into fundraising, that project is a project that could potentially be packaged for this type of funding. And I'm sure there's a bunch of a, others. Yeah, I was going to say we have other um, paving and water and wastewater infrastructure um, projects that are, you know, in the pipeline as well. Yep. Um, Adolfo was working with um, the highway guys and whatnot to try to look at where we have uh, paving and there was three or four, I think, I don't remember, um, three or four that just, you know, top came off the top of people's heads, but, you know, the we definitely should be doing a search right now of what types of projects do we have in town that we'd like to advance, but funding is an issue. If you have any thoughts, send them on up. Okay. There's plenty to do. Yeah, there is. Um, and, and some of this is going to depend on what they put to us, right? Bring the first stimulus bill is going to be, it's got to go and be done construction within 12 months. So that goes towards these projects that we have ready because we've got most of the environmental stuff and all that completed. And we can get tied up in environmental and permitting for over a year on some of these bigger projects. But, yeah. but yeah, if anybody has any ideas or anything, you know, we should be flushing them out. Yep, that's what I was wondering. And see, and see what we can do with them. Because uh -huh. when it hits, it's going to hit fast. So we do have... Several of our more challenging roads on a uh, on a working list. Um, they're they're spread out the town, like Trini mentioned, Maple Street. We've got a few others that are in some dire need of of repair. And in some cases, we're not going to have time to go out and get um, bids or estimates or whatnot for some of these projects. So we're going to have to use our you know, just educated guesses at them because the process is going to move so quick. And so, you know, people that I've been working with in other towns, I've, I've been telling them, target your number high. So round up. You know, we just, it's interesting. It's interesting times, that's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> but it's something. Give me a holler. Yep. I'll work you in somewhere. <laughs> yeah, they're telling you that. I don't think I've been this busy in a long time. <laughs> so, all right, moving right along. Sick leave bank policy. The um, the, the town recently uh, reconvened uh, an old committee. Uh, it was called the Sick Leave Bank Committee. 
Uh, the committee is comprised of town employees that are contributing to the sick leave bank pol uh, policy bank. Uh, and that committee has decided to recommend changes to the sick leave bank to uh, essentially make it more inclusive of all employees, whether they're participating in the sick leave bank or not. I believe Amy is still on the call. She had offered to speak about the committee's uh, proposed changes. Yep, I'm still here. Um, so when I sent the Adolfo, there was a question about whether town employees qualify for the Families First COVID Response Act or the Families First Act um, extension of sick and family leave. And I think we've come to the conclusion, yes, indeed, town employees do qualify for that. Um, given that the committee was revived really in response to COVID-19 outbreak um, in, with concern that some em employees might be sickened or have family members who were ill or whatever be because of coronavirus, um, there was some uh, time pressure to make changes to the sick leave bank policy um, to make sure that there, they had access to adequate, adequate sick leave, paid leave. Um, I, m my feeling now, since families, the Families First Act does um, extend sick and family leave to employees, is that it would make a lot more sense to take the time to revise the policy fully rather than act now on the. Um, sort of major recommendations the committee has and then come back at it again in a few months. So that's, that's where I stand on it. I do you all have questions about the changes that the committee is recommending at this point. Can you just walk us through how this works? I was the reading some bank? of this and yeah, and I, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I probably am not able to focus who have gotten through this and get the whole picture. I get it. Um, so the policy as it stands now basically limits access to sick, the sick leave bank to folks who have contributed to it in the past. Um, and the way the bank works is that in order to participate, um, an employee has to contribute 40 hours in the first year that they are a member and then contribute 16 hours subsequently. Um, the, the problem with that is that the folks who are more, most likely to have inadequate paid sick leave are the folks who don't have 40 hours to contribute in the first place. And so that that's such a barrier that the I think there are only six town employees right now who are members of the sick leave bank. Um, we feel that that is an, a barrier that just makes no sense. Um, so our, um, our point of view is that the point of the bank is to support folks who don't have adequate sick leave. Um, and the barrier is just too high at this point for that to happen. So we would like to remove that restriction entirely, that rather than um, requiring folks to, so to speak, from the sick leave bank to have participated by contributing previously, uh, we would like to see that all town employees who are eligible for paid sick leave are automatically um, enrolled, if you want to look at it that way, and therefore eligible to withdraw sick leave if they need to. Would there be less incentive for them to contribute in the first place? Well, considering that the only six member there are only six members, um, I would say the incentive <laughs> I just don't I, I don't see that this is an effective structure at this point. It does not achieve the goal that it was intended to achieve, basically. The way it was set up, that was people gave hours because they became members, right? I, um, I, 
How I, yeah. Uh, no, actually, my understanding is that it was set up for one specific town employee who was so new that he did not have any sick leave. Yeah. And so right there, the way that the sick leave bank was established already didn't follow the rules of eligibility. So the reasoning behind it being such a draconian, limit, limited um, policy, I cannot explain. I was not there for the... Um, for the creation of this policy, but I, I do know that the feeling of the folks who are participating in it now is that it, it, it's too limited. It, it makes no sense, basically. I'm not arguing with changing it. My question is mm. how you get hours built up that people can use mm -hmm. if they don't have to donate hours. Well, there are a couple of um, ideas for that. One of them is that. You know, I I contribute. Uh, I think I contributed 80 hours last year um, because I'm almost at the maximum of the sick leave that I've accrued. Yeah. So I have no qualms about donating time. Yeah. Um, that's a personal decision. I could have kept them for myself, but I feel fine donating that with the understanding that I may have colleagues who don't have adequate sick leave for their needs. Um, the other idea which I really like is that if folks have reached their maximum, the, the maximum that they can accrue, that the time that they would accrue instead gets pushed into the sick leave bank. I think we are almost at the maximum time that can be accrued anyway under this policy, which is how much? 2,040 uh, hours, I believe, or 2,080 hours, and we're roughly 2, at about 1,800 hours at this point. So I don't, I don't see that there's any problem with there not being adequate sick leave to support um, a colleague who, who needs it. The town could always add to the bank too if they thought that was a good idea. Right. But Amy, all of these are now that the that you're requesting to the board to not take action at this point. All of these items could be discussed within the committee and then brought back to the board in the future, right? Oh, absolutely. And there are some substantial <laughs> changes to uh, there. There are points in here that are just unclear. Um, yeah, there's a lot of work that needs to happen on this policy. So one of the resources out there, Amy, that you might want to look at is coordinating with Adolfo and having the League of Cities and Towns get us the policy some other towns use mm -hmm. and how they do it. Um, that might, instead of reinventing it, maybe there's one that works really good out there. We can just borrow their language. I am definitely in favor of not reinventing the wheel, that's for sure. <laughs> that might be a good resource. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. And Amy, hey. you said this agreed with, were you talking about a law that it agreed with in the beginning when you were describing it? Um, maybe you're referring to the Families First COVID-19 Response Act. Is that... Yeah, I think that's what Pat, what Amy had mentioned was that there was a, an, a sense of urgency to adjust the sick leave bank policy so that it can be used by current staff, whether they're a part of the sick leave bank or not. But in the wake of the, um, the new federal legislation that has been released to protect employees who may be ill or become ill or caring um, is home because they're not in school, uh, now there is no sense of urgency to amend the sick leave bank policy because these federal bills extend protection to town employees. And the town has to do that, are you saying? Yes. So some of uh, this, the act that they're talking about, uh, Pat, is the one that's protecting 
is making uh, that it has different size limits and um, some of what we looked at um, we're looking at it at the state level and I reached out to adults and said hey you know maybe the town's eligible for some of this reimbursement stuff too um, so you know, the the big it's out there the language is out there the big problem is uh, getting clear interpretations of what it means for different organizations and whatnot and that seems to be a much slower trickle coming in I'll be looking forward to more clarification mm -hmm. sounds like a good idea okay all right so I'll continue to work with the committee and, and get you a fully developed revised policy for your review and approval. Sounds good. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Goodbye, everybody. Yep. Take Bye. care. Uh, next up is grants. Uh, nothing under grants. Uh, whoops. Wait a minute. Under new business, we had the um, Brahmin group. Yep. Okay. Um, added line. Okay. Okay, I wasn't sure whether we had added that under other business or new business. This is Tom. Uh, uh, as I said earlier, the Ramin group, uh, let me pull up. I sent you all a document today spelling out the, the group's work thus far. I'm going to pull that up on my computer here so I can reference it. So this is a group that came together in the immediate wake of the um, of the governor's edict relative to COVID-19, and um, it is being coordinated by Capstone Community Action, uh, but it includes 16 other member organizations, uh, ranging from Bethany Church and St. John's Episcopal to Safe Line, the Randolph Senior Center, the Food Shelf, and a host of others. As Amy mentioned earlier during the public comment period, um, we are meeting weekly uh, via Zoom on Wednesday afternoons. There's also a communications group of which I'm a part on behalf of the Randolph Rotary Club um, that is meeting on Tuesday afternoons to talk about getting uh, word out into the community about the um, the, the activities of this Raman group. The Raman stands for Randolph Area Mutual Aid Network. Um, it is prominently featured on the front page of this week's Herald in the lead story on the front page, um, uh, highlighting efforts that is uh, three town region uh, to support people during this crisis. Uh, there is a website that has been set up under the umbrella of RACDC. Uh, that is also referenced in the document that I sent to you earlier today. And at this point, the group is simply asking for the towns of Randolph, uh, Braintree, and Brookfield, the, the Tri-Town area, to uh, come on board as um, supporting members of this ad hoc organization. Um, and that, that simply means having um, having someone at the table at the meetings each week, which I would be happy to do on behalf of Randolph since I'm already doing it on behalf of the Rotary Club. Um, they're not asking at this juncture for any financial support or resources beyond whatever the town could bring to the table in terms of uh, supporting messaging efforts in the community. Um, there may be a modest ask of the organizations involved further down the line to support things like printing of postcards to go out in a direct mail piece, uh, some, some support for postage for such a piece and that kind of thing. But um, that's not part of the ask. Uh, they're simply asking that uh, the and, um, and provide a representative at these weekly meetings. This is Pat. Um, I'll make the motion that we affirm that we support this group and they're one of the founding members. 
I'll second that. Those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aries, do we need to appoint somebody, or is Adolfo going to those meetings already, correct? Uh, Adolfo, Josh, and I have been at most of the meetings since this group came together. Yeah. Josh and but I you're there as the Rotary, correct? Right. Yeah. In that realm. I mean, you're there to represent the town, too, but we really should have somebody there who's representing the town. I will uh, I, I will participate uh, formally in the days that I cannot be there. Josh will most likely be there, so we'll be covered. Yeah. yeah so we'll good. actually have two representatives, right? Two for the price of one. <laughs> <laughs> we have to that cool. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, great. Uh, old business, land use regulation signature page. Uh, I, I meant to remove this from the agenda. It was uh, an error on my part, so there's nothing to consider at that point. Nice. Highway dump trucks. Uh, the board had previously authorized uh, the town to accept uh, bids for two new dump trucks. Uh, Cliff had taken the lead on securing um, financing for the trucks. Uh, he, in your uh, packets, you have an action item sheet uh, asking for you to accept uh, one of the finance companies that offered us a 2.31% interest rate. Is that the best you could do, Cliff? <laughs> there or much left? I think you may have left the call, but uh, we, uh, we we waited around a little bit. We bounced around. We pressured some more, uh, so, some other folks, and, yeah, this is the best rate that, that was out there. Yeah. I think that's pretty good, so I, I would be uh, in favor of uh, accepting that rate. I'll make a motion to that effect. I'll second that. And I'll second that. Well, we got a motion and all kinds of seconds. All those yeah, in favor? Like that rate. <laughs> Aye. 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 Opposed? Stained and it carries. Other business? None. Manager's report. Uh, just a few items. Uh, one is that uh, we received notice today that the COVID-19 issue has received a federal disaster declaration. Um, for us here in Vermont, so we've been we've been tracking all of our time uh, and all of the resources spent on issues. So we will start filling out paperwork soon or request uh, federal federal support. Um, we have been working with our partners at the sheriff's department and with Gifford. Gifford has been preparing um, in case we have a, a massive influx of cases. At this point, uh, we seem to be one of the better faring counties. We, rough, we have roughly uh, about, I think we have five cases so far. Uh, so we're the third fewest cases in the whole state with Grand Isle having three and Essex having one. So, so far we're doing well. Um, but the Sheriff's Department has some COVID-related um, issues that have been springing up that they're dealing with um, domestic issues as well as a, a few suicide attempts. Uh, so they're keeping track of their time and billing the second office with a COVID-19 uh, header on their invoice. Uh, we, uh, I've asked Cliff, uh, Cliff actually didn't ask him, he just pulled this together for us. He did a, a very long-term projection of where he feels we're gonna end this fiscal year uh, some of our very loose numbers, which uh, Cliff will tighten up uh, in the coming meetings in the coming months, but in the in the very preliminary numbers, he believes we will end the fiscal year with a, a surplus in the general fund of seventy five thousand dollars, and we may have roughly thirty to thirty five in the in the highway budget. Uh, we just had a, a wicked hard winter and some other issues pop up, but. Again, these are preliminary numbers, and Cliff will report more detail in the coming months. Uh, and then another news is that we received word from Chandler from from uh, uh, 
Houston are continuing to work with Chandler that they have secured an anonymous donation of $25,000 match the $25,000 in the town's facilities reserve fund to repair the, the, the leak in the roof. So um, we're waiting for that $25,000 to materialize to be directly given to the town and once we have that we can start building an RFP for the work and once the RFP draft is pulled together I will bring it to the board for its consideration. And, um, but for now, uh, th that's really it. Uh, one last small item is that we initially thought we were going to have an issue with bears. Um, you know, we, we're getting into warmer weather. We haven't been able to have any, any burials because of the, the COVID-19 issue. But uh, it turns out that we're, our ground team is working with our local mortuary, and it doesn't look like we're going to have a major problem with that. And that's it. Great. Anybody else have anything to bring up? Um, I just want to say uh, the fact that I brought it up uh, in the manager's report at the, at the first meeting that I attended last month and in response to John Pimentel's um, comments during public comment today, uh, while I realize that COVID-19 has really uh, derailed all of us and it consumed all of us the past month, I would be willing to sit down and work with you on uh, on a letter relative to the climate uh, change uh, issue uh, between now and next month's meeting if uh, if you would welcome my input. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I, I think it's yeah, I'd welcome the help um, from the the guidance that the board gave me at the previous meeting. It, it seemed like it would be a fairly uh, not so challenging to task, but um, it's just a matter of finding the time. But yeah, absolutely, yeah. I would welcome the help. All right, all right, I'll uh, I'll take a shot at maybe. Yeah. Wordsmith it together then over the course of the next couple of weeks. Great, thank you, Tom. Sure. Didn't Didn't John make an, a similar offer earlier in the meeting? Yes. He may. Uh, yeah, I think he. I think he may have. So you know, we could we could loop him in as well. But you know, I think drafting a letter um, to share with the board with three different voices would be challenging. But you know, we could certainly we share a letter with 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 John. But I don't I don't think it's a letter that we would need community approval first. It was supposed to be a letter from the board. Right. Right. And I, I would just point out that get, you know getting some input maybe from um, John or some of the uh, activists that have been pushing it forward uh, might make sense. But in the end, the resolution uh, at town meeting called for the the board and the town to draft the letter. So the onus is really on us and not on them. Um, so long as we as we. Uh, I think hold to the to the intent of the resolution. Um, we should be we should be okay. Once you've got the letter done, I'd be happy to proofread it or give you my opinions on it or anything, Pat. Absolutely, Pat. That seems appropriate. You do the work, and then I'll read it. If you're going to do that, no. you might as well share it with all of us. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. But we went through this uh, when we talked about it right after town meeting. Uh, and I mm -hmm. thought we had hammered out pretty close to what we wanted in the letter. Yeah, I think we did. Yeah. And, and the minutes of that March 12th meeting would reflect that. Uh, yeah, Trina, you're right. I think the, the, the comment um, from the board and from you and from Perry and everyone else was language from the town plan, um, sharing in the letter that sharing the entire article that was presented by the voters and then confirming that the work created by the community led to the creation of this letter, but also using word from uh, a wording from the town plan. That's, right. that's, that's my right. recollection as well. Yep. Yep. Other well. topics? Trying to wordsmith this. I'm used to dealing with multiple editors in my life, so uh, no <laughs> issue there. <laughs> Could I ask two questions, Trini? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Uh, first, one, first one is uh, for Adolfo. I, I'm assuming we anticipate that 
50,000 plus or minus will do the roof at Chandler? Uh, we hope so. We had a, uh, a high end roughly of about 80,000. That number didn't come from an actual source other than uh, an actual expert source. It came from uh, Michael Penrod, who assumed it would cost that much. Uh, folks with a little more expertise in, in, in that type of work has have told us that fifty thousand it shouldn't cost more than fifty thousand. Okay. Good. As long as we do a good job and don't have to redo something in a few years. Mike. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. And Trini, I had a question for you. Uh, I think something Adolfo sent around said that was the league suggesting with votes that were taken by phone if there was a phone conference or meeting. And votes were taken. If it wasn't unanimous, would you get a individual vote on that? That seemed like a good idea to me. We were all unanimous tonight. That you get an that you ask each individual what their vote is. Yeah. Yeah. Our, we didn't have anybody <clears throat> saying nay or abstaining tonight. So. Right. But could we do that in the future if if it's not unanimous? So that. Yeah, that we can. Be. Yep. Thank you. And just so, uh, just to share with everyone that um, the, the rec we have Orca Media recording this meeting, so um, it you know fulfills the loose wording of the state legislature's changing to the open meeting laws. Okay. Great. Any more topics? Hearing none, we have one final item on the agenda. I'll move we adjourn. I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Great. If anybody has any uh, ideas on projects, forward them up. Um, or anything else, uh, you know, tomorrow at 11, a game changer. Um, so if we're going to hear some more on the uh, April 15th date, you can uh, rest assured that date's changing. Uh, and we'll be probably having to shake up some plans uh, with staffing and what not after that's announced, but if anybody, after you watch it, if you want to, anybody from the board thinks we need to enter the impacts to the town, um, reach out and we can schedule a conference call. I can tell you, my day looks like hell. Um, <laughs> wow. But, um, definitely um, but we'll make time to go over that and other impacts and coming and maybe how to get ourselves positioned to get the maximum benefit for the town out of this. So I will tell you that um, being at the table for a lot of these conversations um, for funding coming in to help with uh, things both at the state level and the town level. Um, Randolph in a lot of different things that we probably wouldn't be otherwise. Um, and uh, we had an example, we put forward a list of rail projects and uh, the New England Central Rail Project has a um, million dollars in it to fix Railroad Street in Randolph. Awesome. That's, that's um, great. And, right. you know, do we get funded is another issue, but, um, you know, every chance I have to add anything that's to the benefit of Randolph is in there. Um, the siding on Hall Street is in there. For rail, also, 
Um, you know, if we had an airport, I could help you out on that front too, but since we don't, I haven't been able to add anything in there. But um, Yeah, we have one over in South Randolph. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, and Great I... Tree. Yeah, and we just need to be Trees. poised, I think, for some of these others. And, and see how we can do on those Trees. too. Trina, this is a small thing, but since we brought up Railroad Street, the yep. would would that also include the the nearby crossing on um, where it crosses Pleasant Street in that area? Because that's a pretty bumpy crossing right there right now. Yeah, I can tell you that um, we had uh, had all of maybe 45 minutes to put the list of projects together statewide. And so I was extremely generous with the dollar amount I put in that project uh, because I have no idea what it's going to take. So um, since then, I've looked at it some more, and I think there's probably more than to do some work even further down the line with with the allocation if we get it. Um, so yeah, I would say we can look at that crossing, and we can probably look at that crossing anyway. One of the programs that I manage is Israel, um, and the crossings are in it. So uh, we can look at whether there's any work we can do on that approach for it. But I'll write that on one of my lists, Larry, and if I can find it tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, while we're at it, we should we should have a pedestrian crossing on that on that street too, across the tracks, not just a road crossing. Um, as in a sidewalk? I don't think you mean a true pedestrian crossing, rail crossing. Um, yeah, that yeah, has something, yeah, I meant, but I meant something on, something for foot, like you know, some, some sort of sidewalk or something which would keep the, you know, which would be a, you know, would, would be a separate place for pedestrians to walk on out in the road. Well, we might be able to add that into the railroad street, right? If we're going to put, you know, what does railroad street look like when we're done? And we're going to, we'll have a little bit of time. The positive of where this funding got added into is it is, um, you know, it's just a request now, so we don't have it, but it is in a pot of money that would go to the railroad. So the railroad would have to take the plans and do the construction and oversight of them. Um, so, yeah, you know, I think we'll, we'll have time to look at that and decide what it looks like right now. It's just getting the, getting the project on a list and a dollar value associated with it. Cool. So, yeah, we'll see what happens. Does Great. anybody anticipate there being so much money available that it's going to be hard to get companies? To do the work in the time no we don't um the money that's coming out is coming out uh so far oh, okay. so some of it is you know you got 12 months to finish construction all the way out to four years we would love to have the problem of too much money to spend <laughs> <laughs> but you know, if we can get some of these public works projects out of the way, at in uh, you know, it, it doesn't have to hit the tax, doesn't have to get supported by taxes raised off the backs of property owners in Randolph. That's that's huge. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I agree. We're doing everything we can. Just... You know, and everything that we can get in that's water and wastewater improvements that can be done you know, with 100% funding is not only does it save that group from having to pay for it, it means more people are in paying for the usage of the system, and that helps also. That helps, right. Yeah. So it's a win-win. But, yeah, we'll see what happens. Exciting. If anybody has any ideas, though, you know, them because when I'm sitting in these meetings, it's my opportunity to stroke of a pen, add something in. 
I could use a new water line from the top of the reservoir down over Fires Hill for my snow making. <laughs> <laughs> Looks well, like I might is... have plenty of time to do it. I think I got all summer to build whatever I want to build now. Yeah. You also had good news this week, didn't you, Perry? Well, we got a little. We're not quite out of the woods yet. But, yeah, yep. it might become my new career. I might become a dirt mover because right now I don't have any events right up until the middle of July. So we're pretty much going to be dormant for a while. Wow. Yeah, I got uh, waiting on Dartmouth to make a decision tomorrow whether they're going to move forward with any of their stuff during the June process. But I'm willing to bet they're going to not do anything. So that'll take me out of, we're not to worry about much going on in June. And then I got the word the other day, they're canceling the Prouty and they're canceling the Do Good Fest. So, and then I've got numerous brides that are starting to get paranoid. So we'll see. <laughs> I'd take up a new career. We're going to mow lawns or something. I don't know. Find something to do. <laughs> I'll be playing some golf, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Hey. Well, if they let us on the golf course, maybe we will. Yeah, well, <laughs> I think they'll do that. All right. Hey, well, thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.